the title right of this video or the stream whatever is watch them fall like dominoes so if you if you look at the um the thumbnail right and i'm pretty sure all of us have done this as a kid maybe as an adult too i'm not gonna judge you but you know when you stack dominoes right next to each other Okay, so you get you guys already know how this works, right? When you set up a bunch of dominoes, you know, you space them out and then one of them you tip over, right? When you tip one of them over, what does it do to the following ones? That one domino is standing up straight, right? And then you tip it over. What starts to happen? Physics with John Fibonacci. They they all fall. Okay, Ninja, do they all fall at the same time? Or, like Sean says, do they fall one by one? This one hits that one. Then that one hits, you know, the next one, so on and so forth, right? So what people like to do in these YouTube videos and when you were a kid and you watched it happen, you, you saw it, right? Like you kind of watched it go from one end to the other until the last one fell down. Is everybody on the same page here? It's a very simple concept. And I we always like to do, um, you know, I always try to give you guys like cool shit like this to kind of help understand what actually happens in price. When you have the indices, okay, there's three of them. Well, I mean, you have like the Russell 2000. I don't really count that. But the three primary, NASDAQ, SPY, Dow Jones. NASDAQ, SPY, Dow Jones, okay? Or NASDAQ, S&P, Dow Jones. So let me draw this out for you again, as I do fairly often. So when one of them goes higher, and the other two go lower, this to me is distribution, right? Because price distributes above old highs or below old lows. Accumulates below old lows, you know, so on. So accumulation distribution, right? So when the other two sell off and that one that was distributing, you usually have that final retracement before it rips ass. In other words, what we're going to do, it's, it's a lot easier to explain with the actual price action. But I just, again, I want to make sure you guys get those visuals because you're not going to understand this, why I was why I'm short on Dow because it's the third domino in today's sell-off. So let me explain. We go to triple Q's. Look at this. When Tanya, she's a streamer on YouTube and she was looking in here, I think for long positions, but on triple, I mean, uh, on NASDAQ. So she was looking at NASDAQ for longs in here. So, you know, naturally I'm like, okay, well, let me, let me try and see what she's looking at. And there's really not a lot to look at on the future side. We had NFP here, uh, equities open somewhere in here. We did have a rally. It made that triple highs, you know, idea that I have told you guys about the last couple of weeks, one high, two high, three highs, rest in peace. So we do kind of see that here. And so the problem is, okay, and, and this is why I tell you guys from time to time that if you're going to trade indices or if I trade indices, there's six things, seven things I'm looking at, and they're all on the screen for you. NASDAQ, NASDAQ ETF, triple Qs. So if you look at the triple Qs on a, let's just go to the 15 minute time frame. You don't really have lows you don't have equal lows you have a lot of manipulation you have after hours manipulate well after hours I, I wouldn't say manipulation but you know earnings and stuff can can pump the after hours which you're not going to see in the equities open what i mean is the futures are going to have this data the triple q's are not so again like let's say five minute time frame you can already see what i'm looking at right five minute nasdaq there's not really any lows. There's no equal lows. You have NFP stuff here. There's there's no high probability downside target for NASDAQ on the future side. ETFs, however, totally different story. 
totally different story. 4-4, four, 4.93. Four, four Look at this. One, two, almost three lows at 4-4493. Four, 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 so again, and I'm not trying to criticize Tanya. I'm not trying to talk shit. She's a funded trader. She posts withdrawals all the time. She's great. Okay, so I'm not trying to criticize her, but I, I did tweet at her and I said, look, you know, you're basically trying to long in here or yeah, you're trying to long in here when we've got equal lows down here, but you're not going to see that. You're not going to see that always on the triple Qs. There's nothing here. If anything, all these lows, some of these lows were, were swept for NFP. And you might think, oh, well, that's a liquidity run, and then it's going to trade higher. Yeah, in the short term, maybe. But equities, equities markets got all these lows right here. So in other words, I don't like to short, or excuse me, I don't like to long when there's equal lows. Downside objective. Let's go take a look at SPY. What she got over there? Oh, my God. 514. Another set of lows. SPY created so many lows this week. It's disgusting. Lows down here. Lows down here. And then a third set of lows. I'm like, all right, bro. You know, like, how many, how many times are you going to do this? So NASDAQ has the lows. SPY has the lows that were met. But wait a minute. The Dow has lows that haven't been met. So NASDAQ sells off. SPY sells off. What's Dow Jones doing? Take a look at it. What's the Dow Jones doing? Well, normally I don't like to point out this kind of shit because I think it's absolutely, utterly ridiculous. But, you know, here we are. Okay, this is a generally or generally perceived as a uh, bull flag okay or it might not be all that it could just be i'm not really trying to be perfect with these bullshit drawings okay but you can kind of see what i'm getting at right you have your flag pole and then you got this wedge or triangle whatever so i that might be better seen on uh that looks better as far as if there's ever going to be like a clean retail pattern it's going to be Right here. Okay. Where you again you guys see what I'm seeing, right? This what this is a retail bullish flag pattern. Retail bullish flag pattern. If again, I want to make this a point. S and P is lower. NASDAQ is lower. You think the Dow Jones is gonna prop up the stock market? There's only 30 stocks over there. NASDAQ is like a hundred. S and P is like five hundred and five or something. And then Dow has 30. You think 30 stocks are going to prop up the indices? Come on. Be realistic here. Bull flags mostly are bullshit. Okay? You can write that down if you want. But there's your bull flag, right? So am I going to buy a bull flag or am I going to short a bull flag? I'm going to short. I'm going to short. So what's the play here? I was watching this originally. This was like right at the tail end of AM session, like right at the beginning of lunch. Um, but basically, this is where I shorted. Okay. It was like right in here. So I thought I had a pretty solid entry, and then it went against me a little bit. And I said, um, this is going to absolutely dump. Like, this is going to dump. Whoop. We got that sell off. I'm still waiting for this to go lower. My stop is in profit. If it happen, if I'm wrong, if it happens to go higher and just leaves the lows, that's fine. But the point I'm trying to tell you, the entire point I'm trying to make is number one, you gotta check ETFs, you gotta check futures in case they don't line up. Meaning, futures doesn't have any targets that I would look for, but the triple Qs, you bet your ass, there's some clean lows here. So I would not look for longs in this market. I would look for shorts in which we sold off. NASDAQ sold off disgustingly. It's down 1.2%. Dow Jones is slightly green, right? So again, you saw that sell off at 10 o'clock. What's SPY doing? 10 o'clock, it's up here. It hasn't sold off. That's what I was trying to short, but it never gave me an entry. Okay. 
I'm still gonna find an entry. You just gotta find it somewhere. I don't recommend. I don't usually recommend doing that, but I've been doing this a while, so I'm gonna find a fucking entry. But the 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 uh, S and P is a downside objective. Okay, well, ten o'clock. What's the Dow doing? It's still up here. It hasn't sold off yet, so it's lagging behind. It's that third domino. The Dow is that third domino. Nasdaq falls. That's the first one. S and P follows suit. That's the second one. Dow Jones, that's the third domino. Sells off, retracement, and again, I'm expecting a sell-off, but if I'm wrong, I'll be stopped out in profit anyway. Do you only look at equal highs, slash lows, and unfilled gaps on the ETF side of the futures? Uh, that's what I predominantly look for for targets, Lucas. That's where the liquidity is at. I want to target liquidity. I want to short in a premium and then cover in a discount at liquidity. Somebody's long from this morning. Somebody long this morning or they long this retracement praying that it's going to go higher. They're going to have stops down here. They're going to look at this like, oh, this is a demand zone. So it's going to hit this and go higher. So a lot of people are going to try and long this right now. Where is their stop going right here? So we should see an exponentially or an exponential move lower. That's what we should like this candle right here. We should probably see that soon. Just to kind of recap a lot of what I just explained. To sum it up, futures, ETFs, and I forgot to mention dollar index. Dollar index higher, potentially indices lower. Okay. What did the dollar reach into? How far can price go below a low? An imbalance. Yeah, John, I heard you talk about that all the time. All the time, John. It's so annoying. Right? It does overshoot that. I ain't gonna lie to you. It does. Goes into this lower one down here. Goes into this down candle as well. You know, we see that price sells off aggressively. Grabs both of those lows. Well, actually, this low was yesterday. Sorry. But the lowest low, that was grabbed today. Gap was traded into today, even extended to this gap and down candle back here at 102.40s or even the 30s, maybe. And then so as we're trading away from that, right, that was that NFP manipulation. As we're trading away from that, we see the dollar drifting higher, which again could mean a uh, lower indices. So so Dow was the uh, the laggard, that third domino. OK, so the three indices futures, that's three. And then the three ETFs that make six dollar index makes seven. All right. So when you get them in alignment, you get chef's kiss trades. Easy money, baby. Easy money, baby. That's what I'm looking for. Trying to get the bag. We should have recorded that whole thing, but here we are. So um, this is going to be the end of the video. TP smash for Dow Jones, right? Again, this is like that third domino. NASDAQ sold off first. S&P sold off second. Dow was still hanging around. Bull flag. BS. Boom. Massive down candles. Only one up candle or like two or three up candles in this whole segment here. Dirty, nasty market to the downside put options bussing right now so with that being said drop a like leave a comment and subscribe uh so you don't miss future content